What's up YouTube and it's time for another painting video. This time we're going to be doing a uh, Romeo XF from the Anima Tactics set. Romeo is a leader for the church faction and here we go starting with a white primer. I'm going to go ahead and do the eyes. This is normal for me. Paint in the entire uh, area of the eyes black. I'm going to come in with uh, the white and paint the main part of the eyeballs in and then just come in and uh, dot the eyeballs black. So pretty straightforward. Now as far as my color scheme is going to go, I'm going to slightly alter the um, the box art here and kind of make him look more like my uh, Ultima Online character that I used to play back in the day. So yeah, I'm an old gamer so Ultima Online is uh, a thing for me, or it was one. Here's my, uh, my base skin color, Vallejo Game Color Deep Skin Tone. So you can see that going down, and I use that to kind of frame the eyes. Now, Romeo kind of has large eyes, and it, it's kind of like bug eyes. For, and it, uh, but I, you know, I tried to work with it. Um, once that's dried, I'm going to add 50% uh, Vallejo Model Color Basic Skin, co skin Tone to the uh, Deep Skin Tone, and use that as the true undercoat for the skin. So this is a pretty standard formula for my flesh and how I do that. Gonna allow that to dry, and I'm gonna apply a wash. And this time, I'm using the Citadel uh, Seraphim Sepia Wash. Uh, that's the wash I typically use for skin, because Caucasian skin, anyways, because I tend to stay lighter uh, with the wash. Um, and once this is dry, I'm gonna come back in with that same mix: 50% uh, Game Color Deep Skin Tone and 50% Basic Skin Tone. And uh, just come back in and restore my my base color. Uh, the wash is going to give it a little bit of a, t a browner tinge to it. Uh, and then finally, I'll add more basic skin tone to that mix and do a final highlight on the flesh. So pretty short uh, flesh blend here because he's a male um, figure. A lot of times on female figures, I actually go uh, much higher, but I figured this would work just fine for Mr. Romeo here. Um, and you know, it, it's nice vibrant skin, uh, gives him a really nice character, and his face does have quite a bit of character to it. Once that's done, I'm going to go in with my Vallejo Model Color Medium Blue, and I'm going to use that for the cloak, I'm going to use that for the, uh, the main part of the, um, the scabbard for the sword there. Um, and so I'm, I, this part of it does kind of stick with the box art. Uh, and while that's going uh, drying, I'm going to come in with a mix, 80% uh, uh, model color intense blue and 20% black gray. So kind of like a, a, a blue gray for the, uh, I guess this is called the, the barding or the, the leather, uh, the leather kilt that uh, Romeo's rocking here. I'm also going to use it on uh, the sleeves as well. So it's a blue on blue, but you can see that it works because one is a very bright blue and the other one is a, a dark gray blue. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that medium blue and use that as the first highlight on the cloak and the, uh, the medium blue there. So nothing but brushwork in this video. This is going to be all basic old school stuff with just a couple of tricks here to try to pick out that, uh, that intricate armor uh, that I have not touched yet. Giving this a, the straps a little highlight there by adding a little bit of white to my uh, dark gray uh, medium blue mixture there, or dark gray intense blue mixture, sorry. Uh, so I give that a little bit of a highlight. Now it's time to get started on the armor, which is going to be a very, very intense kind of a glowy white. So I'm going with sky blue as the undercoat here, and I'm going to just continue to mix more and more uh, Vallejo model color white and start to uh, layer that up and highlight uh, more and more white. So here's a believe at this point I'm at like a 50-50. And um, what I would say is just get used to doing lots and lots of layers. Looks like I'm still on undercoat. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, still working on the undercoat at this point. But I will start to blend some white into this and touch it up. Now, you can see there's lots and lots of intricate detail on the armor. And you can do really cool stuff like that with the um, 
uh, with metal models, and, and it's one of the reasons why I still really prefer metal. Even as wonderful as the plastic models are these days, uh, Cypher does the metal kits right, and I uh, I want to do them right. So, so here we go. Added some white to that mix, and you can see that I'm uh, highlighting that out. Just going to leave that light blue in the crevices and continue to build. Now, my thing with uh, white, is, and I paint a lot of different white, as you might know, is uh, the more layers you build, the cooler it looks. Um, as long as you just don't cake it on, you have to go very thin layers. And now that that's done, I'm going to go with some yellow ochre here to pick out some of that embroidering, that detail on the armor. Um, you know, pick out some of the, the bordering. Uh, it's really neat. So I'm going to go with uh, yellow ochre there. Once the yellow ochre is dry, I'm going to give it a wash of the Seraphim Sepia again, because it's a very versatile wash for me. Um, if you don't have access to Seraphim Sepia, you can actually uh, mix a little bit of uh, Vallejo uh, model color sepia, or use the sepia ink. Chestnut's also another good uh, um, alternate here. Do not try to use uh, Army Painter Soft Tone, because there's a little too much gray in that uh, that wash to try to match up with Sepi. It's not the best match there. Uh, it's one of the few reasons why I will still use this GW washes because there are not uh, there are not great you know drop-in replacements here. Sometimes I have to make a wash work. But anyway, so you can see I'm spot applying the wash there. It gives the uh, this gold a little bit of a burnished look and gives it a little bit of depth. And it's a non-metallic gold, so um, which is perfect for anima. And, uh, you know, it's just a great technique for helping you pick out this really fine detail on the armoring, the armor here. Uh, starting in with the hair, going to use some medium gray on the hair. Um, this character is a UO character, and the character has white hair. So I start with a medium gray, and I'm going to work that up towards white. But I'm not going to do too much with it. You know, I already have the glowing white of the armor. And uh, to be honest, this color scheme is a little... It's a little light, it's a little washy, but uh, it should be okay. Um, so with that gray, I'll add a little bit of white to the mix, that medium gray. Give it a highlight. Uh, now I'm coming back in with a, a blue tone, and I'm going to use this Army Painter blue tone for the, uh, the blue cloak uh, and the uh, scabbard as well. Just going to give it a little bit of shadow. You can see I'm not really... I, I did thin this down a little bit, so it should be a pretty subtle effect here on the, uh, the blue. Also using this blue tone on the um, the kilt and the kind of blue, that blue-gray um, uh, sections of the armor there. Here's a little bit more white added to that medium gray to highlight the hair. So there we go. This is a, the 50-50 mix pretty good so far. Um, I'm not being too exact with the hair, just uh, making sure that I pick off the highest edges. Uh, also going to come back in with that yellow ochre and just pick off the edges of the uh, the gold trim that I put in. And you can see that it's, it's already popping because of the wash, but that little highlight actually brings things back uh, more towards that gold color I was looking for. So uh, next step, looks like I am actually going to start working on the base, and I wanted this to look like grayed out uh, weathered wood, so I start with uh, Vallejo Model Color uh, Iraqi Sand. If I wanted this to be a rich wood or dark wood, I could have done that as well, but uh, uh, Iraqi Sand is going to be great here, and I'm going to show you how I actually make this, uh, this wood look uh, grayed out. So same basic principle, we're going to start off with an, like, kind of a an older sun-dried wood, that, uh, that's the color that Iraqi sand gives us, it's more of a pine color when it goes uh, down over wood. I'll go ahead and uh, base coat the entire base that way. These are, by the way, these are secret weapon uh, bases that I'm using here. Uh, and then I'm going to highlight it with uh, model color basalt gray, uh, and that's what's actually going to give it the uh, 
uh, the grayish look. But you can see it looks kind of funny. It doesn't look uh, blended in. And so that's where I'm going to come in with the Army Painter Strong Tone here. Uh, the Strong Tone will bring all those together uh, and actually start to age the wood. So you can actually see a little bit of the boards there. Um, and you see it looks like uh, aged and weathered wood. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do for this model. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, knock out a black lip here, and, and he's done for the most part. This is uh, going to be Romeo from Anima Tactics. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a straight, pure and simple brush video. Uh, so thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.